<clears throat> Ohio, Columbus, and Ohio State are leading the way in so many ways many. And our families are truly proud and humbled to be a part of this movement. It's clear that the impact that is being made here is not only leading the way nationally, but setting an example for others across the country. But this doesn't happen without great leadership and great vision. Governor DeWine, thank you for not only being an advocate for the importance of mental health, but for allocating the resources and funds that you have for this issue. Your display of compassion for the citizens of Ohio is of great distinction. President Carter, your work in this area is well documented in the military, and thank you for embracing these efforts and for all your overall leadership that you've done during your first six months here at Ohio State. I also want to personally thank Gene Smith for not only what he's done for me personally, but encouraging me and I to step forward and be a part of this. I want to thank Bobby Shotsky as well, not only for what you've done and your support here, but what you've done for us and encouraging us in this area and the private conversations you have surrounding mental health. Part of this is making a difference. So thank you. I also want to thank my two daughters, Grace and Nia, who are here today. And Mental health, however, affects all of us. It is what we know the least about. 
Let's continue to do the great work that's being done and continue to be leaders in this area and across the country. Thank you again for this recognition and allowing our family to be part of changing lives. Go Bucks. It's an honor for, for Nina and I to be here uh, with everybody here today. Uh, most importantly, Dr. Fong and Governor DeWine. There's a lot of great things about Ohio, the city of Columbus. But one of the things that we've recognized is the community and the caring that goes on here. And this is just another great example of that. What Dr. Fawn is doing here is groundbreaking. And so we all want to leave the next generation better than we found it. And this is one way that we're doing that. But that doesn't help, or that doesn't happen without the help of leadership. And what Governor DeWine has done and his care for the citizens of Ohio is a great distinction. And we're just honored to be a part of this. We believe very strongly that you have physical health and mental health. And this is something that everybody has, mental health. And to break the stigmas around it, but also provide health and the research to move forward is important to me and I. So we're honored to be here. Thank you. Question. I guess just talk more about your passion for mental health. You're a face here at Ohio State, but now you're also a face of the cause. What does that feel like, and I guess, why do I, for those that aren't familiar? It didn't take long for Nina and I to realize the platform that Ohio State, in particular the Ohio State football program, provides us. And one of the things that you want to do in your life is have an impact on others. And early on, Nina came to me, it was her idea, she recognized you know, what was going on across our country with our with our youth right now, uh, but also, you know, uh, with adults and, and college students. And, you know, uh, my background, I lost my dad when I was when I was young to suicide, so it's very close to me. And we shared different uh, mental health issues. Uh, and so you know, we felt like this was a great platform to put out there, uh, break stigma, but also allow our players to do that very thing. You know, they're very high profile here, and you're seeing that. You're seeing our guys come out and not only talk about their struggles, but talk about how they're building resilience towards handling adversity. Since, since you donated back in 22, how do you feel like that's, that's helped towards the resilience fund? That's that's well, 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 so many have, have given financially, and we know how important it is to do that, uh, but, but also the awareness. And it's, I can't tell you how many people have come up to Nina and I and told their story of how important it is. It's something that for years uh, people didn't talk about. Uh, but uh, when Governor DeWine set the way on this and set the path, you know, we were very, you know, very happy to join along and be a part of it. And it was easy to see how many people here in Ohio were willing to jump on board. Let me just ask you. Yeah, sure. it, look, look, when someone with this high profile and the kind of holy ball that has, uh, as the day is had, and they come out and say, this is a very important problem, and then they put their own money behind it. Uh, you just can't calculate how much good that that does. It makes people more aware. It allows people to talk about this. Uh, when people in the past, you know, been re very reticent of, about talking about it. So their example just is just absolutely huge as we go about dealing with the stigma, getting rid of the stigma, and also doing the research and do all the other things that, that, that need to be done. Ryan, you mentioned that you know some of your players have come out and talked about this publicly, their own struggles. How much just more comfortable have you seen players get over the years with being able to share their stories? Yeah, I, I see it even uh, in the last five years. I think you're seeing more and more, um, you know, more of our guys be comfortable with it. And the, the, first off, within the team, they share some of those conversations. We, we talk about how you know. Building balance in your life is building high ground for hard times through faith, family, and friends. And when you have faith, family, and friends to lean on to talk about these types of things, and you have trust with those people, but I think also the environment that that's going to build, not only you know in our program, but at Ohio State uh, by Gene Smith, uh, by, by so many people in, in our along the university, certainly with, with Dr. Fong's doing. But again, then in Ohio, and so when so many people are aligned, then it, you know guys feel more comfortable doing. I think the, the community has done a great job of embracing some of those individuals. What about the, the fellow coaches on your staff? How have they kind of taken individual players, position rooms maybe, or, or whatnot, or maybe talk about their own struggles? Yeah, um, I think like anything else, you have to have alignment within your program. 
And when you know, we hire folks, we spend a, a long time trying to figure out if they're the right culture fit for us and embracing exactly how things are. I think our guys have done that, our, our assistant coaches, our staff members, um, and some of the resources that we provide. But again, it all comes down to the players and building that culture. We have 120 guys in the third. How much do you see the, the players, each other, you know, build each other up in that regard in terms of being able to open up to each other and talk to each other? I, I think it's it's pretty significant. And I'll, I'll share a quick story with you. We, we have what's called the scarlet line on our fields. I don't know if you ever heard me talk about this before, but in the game of football, it doesn't really care about what you're going through. And that's a harsh reality that you have to figure out. And so when we cross that scarlet line, we have to go play the game. We've got to play it really well. But once we cross that scarlet line and go back in the locker room, we lean on our faith, our family, and our friends and the teammates. And at that point, when you see our locker room, I think you see a lot of guys supporting each other and guys who speak out put their arms around them and help them. Nina, how long have you been wanting to do something like this? <laughs> Were you expecting a question? <laughs> <laughs> um, probably, you know, I think the first um, month when Ryan was announced as the head coach, um, I brought it up to him. I said, you know, what are we going to get behind? And I just wanted to make sure that we got behind something that we felt very strongly about, very passionate about, and something that you know we could live um, and it just became a natural um, kind of progression I suffered from anxiety my entire life um, and I suffered in silence because growing up nobody really talked about it so my goal was to um, make sure my children never suffered in silence or any other ch child or adult for that matter and we experienced a loss with Brian's dad um, and we never spoke about it until probably we started to go through this process. So it's been very therapeutic for us, as well as a family. 